Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So when I left you guys last, we were in here digging the mud, the filler, out of this quarter panel. And I'm happy to report that the further I work down toward the uh, the wheelhouse here, it actually got thinner and thinner. If you guys go, you know, if you missed the last episode, we stopped about right in here somewhere. In fact, I think you could kind of see the line there. Uh, it was slightly thicker than that, but still not bad at all. Well within reason, wasn't even over eighth of an inch thick. Uh, the further down you get, I mean, we're barely at a skim coat at this point. Uh, expecting a little more filler as we go down. Uh, you can see a little bit there and a little bit there. So I'm going to continue grinding this out, and I'll show you guys what I end up with. Uh, we got a little more on the door over here. We'll get that out of there. Basically, what we're doing is we're just going to start over with all new filler. So on this episode, I think that would be a, a really good goal. Get the, you know, everything straightened out on this side. Whatever body work it needs, let's just get it knocked out. That way we can move on to the priming stage. I'd like to get the whole side of this car in primer as soon as possible. This thing, it's all bare metal. I don't like opening up more than I could turn around and close back up as quickly as possible. This has already been opened up a whole day. And really, I mean, that's a day longer than I care for. So... All right, this is the last of it right here. That's as thick as it got. Right there, not quite a quarter of an inch, about three sixteenths. It's basically right down in this body line. They just kind of filled that up a little bit. And I mean, judging by the metal, he, I mean, I don't understand why it just didn't really seem all that necessary. This, this whole area is very, very close. To me, they just kind of went overboard with the mud, to be honest, but even this back here this is all i mean you feel that it's just slightly just slightly wavy a little bit you kind of feel their hammer marks mostly you know uh back here of course this needs to get have something done with it but back here this is nothing just slight waves so there really was just no need for thick mud not even in this area so when we go back with our filler it won't be quite as thick not that this was excessive but you know it's just a little thicker than i'd prefer and uh, I don't think it was necessary, to be honest. So anyway, let's finish getting that out, and then I'm going to come over here and get all this out of the door. I'm kind of curious to how thick that is. So the quarter panel is officially mud free at this point. We can move on down to the door. Uh, the old body man did all right, man. Look at that. All that metal is where it's supposed to be. I mean, nothing's caved in or weird going on. Got to hand it to the old guy. He did okay, man. Uh, and it, it held on for all these years. I guarantee you this paint job's every bit of 30 years old. So yeah, guy did all right, man. This is the last of the filler right here on the fender. I'm gonna get those ground down right quick. So now that I've worked the area down with my 24 grit Rolock disc on my angle grinder, I'm gonna go over this with my 80 grit on my DA. Just kind of dress it up. All 
right, so I've gone through, cleaned my uh, panel down with my acetone on a rag. These are the uh, Scott brand lint-free paper towels, and you can see this is what the panel starts out like. I mean, extremely, extremely dirty. Even though it's bare metal and it, it appears to be clean, this is what you're dealing with. So you definitely want to use that. Uh, I've seen guys use lacquer thinner, and I was always told not to do that, that that actually will leave kind of a, a residue, a film that you can't even really see on the surface and then that makes everything that you put on top of that not want to stick it could come loose later so anyway just keep wiping flipping your rag eventually you know the rag will start to stay clean and then you know you're good to go i've gone through here with uh, with a uh, sharpie and just kind of circled all my low spots i've got a few here not many just a few we're going to go ahead and wipe those these are very minor and I think I could get away with just glazing them. So let's get started on that. We're just gonna need a little bit because these areas aren't bad. Now the cool thing, cool thing about this stuff here is that it's thin enough that when you go back to sand it, you'll be able to uh, just sand it with like 80 grit and finish it off with 120. We don't have to get into the heavier grits like the 40 and the 36 and all of that. These dents are very, very minor, so this should do fine. There we go. That's about that's about it. It don't take much. The more you use, of course, I know most of y'all know this, the less time you're going to have to get it on the panel. You don't want to waste this stuff. I mean, I know it's not, this stuff here, you know, like I said, 25 bucks a tube, but you still don't want to waste it. Okay, let's get it on the panel. When I get it to about that point right there, basically what's happening at this point is we're starting to see all the way around. I mean, I can see right through. Look, you can actually see my Sharpie mark. All right, so what I want to do is I want to switch grits. I've got 120 grit. That was 80 grit, remember? This is 120. Let's finish it with 120. And man, you could get, you could go a step further and get it to where it's just almost ready and finish it off with 180 or 150. We've been moving right along here. Got this fender pretty much prepped, ready to go. All the little dings are straightened out on it. Looking good. Uh, went ahead and did a little, little wrapping, you know, got, got some of it masked off. Uh, I'll still have to go back in here and, and mask the inside jam here and then cover that up and then of course cover this up. Uh, we're going to sand this door and that's 1K primer right now. So 1K primer isn't exactly uh, suited for block sanding. It's not a high build primer like what we're about to be using. So you know, we just put that on there to get, get rid of the bare metal and it's just something we had sitting around that we needed to use up anyway. So it served its purpose. We will be scuffing that back down and putting 2K primer on it right along with the rest of this size. So this is where I'm at right now. Uh, just been kind of cleaning up around the door frames. Got all that sanded back down to bare metal all the way around the edges. Now I'm getting in here. This piece, these fins, in case you guys don't know, that's literally a separate piece that's just sitting right on top of the door panel and it attaches with all these little spot welds. Uh, I never, I didn't know that. You know, I'm kind of, I'm not real familiar with cars from the 50 personally. I've drooled over them in magazines my whole childhood, but I've never really owned them and I've never really worked on them or built them or anything like that. You know, uh, I grew up in the 90s, so. Uh, I think the oldest car I've ever owned was actually a 1960 Chevy pickup. So this is my first ex experience with a car from the 50s era with the big fins. And I don't even know, man, is that normal? You guys comment below if you know. Is that normal for the fin to actually be grafted on top of the panel versus it all just being like pressed out of one piece? Stupid question, I know, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, you can see here all the way down the whole quarter panel, this is where the fin actually attaches right here. It just kind of goes on its own separate piece. Kind of cool, but it does cause problems for 
someone that's wanting to do some repainting because I got to get in there and I got to clean where these two pieces come together. There's actually a gap there. I got to clean all of that out and we'll have to seam seal all of that. We don't want water just running, running through there. So, you know, we'll seam seal that stuff, clean out all the old paint around the edges. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to use is a wire brush on my die grinder here. I think that will get down in that channel pretty good. And we'll just zip this on around there and see how it works out. Okay, so this door is completely ready to start our bodywork phase. Uh, found a few dents, you know, got a little ding there. And then of course we know everything that's going on down at the bottom. We'll get that straightened out as well. But most importantly is we got all the old paint stripped off around the edges and where these two panels meet. So we'll be able to uh, get, get our materials in there and make sure that nothing, you know, rusts in between. Uh, I do believe that this should have some kind of a seam sealer on it, at least up here on the top. And it, and it seemed like it already had some, I was digging some out of it. Whether it was factory or something somebody added, I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some back in it just to be sure, uh, at least up on this top edge. You can see here where, I mean, even from the factory, there's a huge gap there. So apparently they weren't too worried about it. I mean, there was nothing in it, but I figured at least, you know, along the bottom here, we probably shouldn't have to worry about it, but up on top where the water is going to hit and try to run in there, uh, it would seem as though we'd want to try to prevent that from happening. And then, of course, if any does come in there, you leave this part open so that it just, you know, goes right on through and doesn't get trapped in there. We don't want to trap water in this pocket. We want to prevent it. And whatever little bit does go through, like I said, we just want it to run out the bottom. But I'm moving on to the next panel because this panel is officially stripped all the way around. We are good to go. This quarter panel is a whole nother story. It's got this channel here where the trim goes in and and this is a this panel is on top of this panel and it's spot welded all the way through here. So we've definitely got to clean that channel out really well. Make sure all that old paint, rust, everything's out of there. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And then we're gonna move on to this taillight pocket, which that's a challenge all by itself. We're gonna to have to get the old gasket material out of there clean that all up really good because it has a whole thing that slides in here and covers this panel so we need there to be paint in between there okay so switched over to this bad boy hopefully this won't be too aggressive that other one was taking just a little bit too long and I, it doesn't seem like it's really getting down in the channel which is you know that's where i need it the most so let's see what this one does All right, that's working really good to get the paint off the outside. In fact, I gotta kind of be careful. We may not have a panel left when I get done, but still down inside that channel, you know, right here where the panel lays, I'm having trouble getting in there. I'll probably just have to get in there and scrape it out by hand. I don't know. That old channel's cleaning up nice. We got all that old surface rust out of there, all the old paints out of there. We've managed to make it down here to the uh, filler neck. Get all this old gasket material off of here.
That's not bad just for a few seconds. Look at that. That cleaned up nice. We'll get all the rest of it. Man, that is a hundred times better than it was just a few minutes ago. Nice. All right, so we're about to reach the end of the quarter. We're gonna get up in here, get all of this paint worked down as well, all in this area. Okay, so we're just about got the whole entire quarter all sanded down. Got all the old nasty seam sealer out of all the seams. Where the panels butt together. I've uh, worked my way down through here. So I'm trying to figure out how this trunk seal comes off of here. And I think it fits down in this little channel right here on top. Uh, now this seal's no good. But I'm going to try to save it just in case. We have a new seal on the way. But just in case, you know, we, we want to try to save this stuff. And yeah, see, that's what I mean right there, how it just comes, clicks down inside the channel here. It's not really hard to, to get in there, so shouldn't be a problem saving it, I don't think. Uh, but like I said, it's in really, really bad shape. It's all dried and cracked and very stiff, so it probably doesn't even work, to be honest. I doubt it's keeping much water out these days, so... Anyway, it's got to come out of here nonetheless, so let's just get it out of here for now, and um, we'll see about replacing it with that new stuff. But just in case the new stuff turns out to not be the right stuff, we will be able to just reuse this. Go ahead and get this top part out. Here, it's kind of weird that there's a seam right in the middle here. It seems like that should just be all one piece, but that's how it was. It looks like there's another one right up here. So we'll just pull, go ahead and pull this section on up out of here. Set it aside. Because basically what I'm wanting to do is I want to clean this jam out. Since I've got all this cleaned up, I figured, you know, this is where we're stopping for now. Reason being is because we still got to do our rust repair here. So there's no sense of getting too carried away. That'll probably actually be our stopping point. But I do want to go ahead and clean out this part of the jam as part of this portion of the quarter, which we've already got stripped. So get all this cleaned up and primed in all at the same time. Should be able to just kind of throw this around over here like that. Might be good enough, really. Just leave it hanging right there. I'm gonna come in here with my wire wheel, clean all of this up really nice, because you can see it's kind of, it's kind of gross down in there. It's got built up, built up seam seal and and rust and it's just nasty. So let's get it all cleaned out. Okay, at this point we got all the paint removed. We can come back in, do a little body work. We got a few little dents, little dings here and there that need to be straightened out, nothing major. Um, I think that's where I'm gonna go next. Let's get that started. We'll start on this door and just kind of work our way backwards. Let's mix up some mud. It's a pretty good spot, so pretty good you know area. So we're gonna mix up quite a bit. I think that'll do it though, just about like that. All right. Let's get some hardener in there. That ought to be enough. All right, here we go.
Start with our smallest dent, get it out of the way. That ought to do. Now this down here was a pretty good size area that actually started all the way up here. So we want to fill all this back up. Try not to lose any of it. And we're not worried about making it pretty at this point. We just kind of want to get it on the car. We're going to get it on here. We're going to wipe it back and forth. Just like that. Now I've got a wide spreader sitting to the side over here. And right after we get all this on here, we'll run over with that wide spreader. Smooth everything out, make it look nice. Now if you guys remember the old, the old body work came out to about right in here somewhere and that was it. That's about what we're going to do here. We'll go out just a little further. And then we'll start smoothing all this out, make it look nice. Wipe back this way. Work out all those air bubbles. It's really important. Okay, so here is my wide spreader. We'll come in here and just kind of smooth all this out. Make it look nice. Something like that ought to do for now. Uh, we'll probably have to go over it again. That's no big deal. We'll work this for now and uh, see what we're at. This is what I'll be working the spot with. Uh, I think I'll start off with this. This is a 40 grit disc on my uh, my palm sander and that'll kind of give us a head start. Uh, I've got a short block, long block. Both of these have 30 gr 36 grit sandpaper on them and uh, we'll start off just knock this down right quick shouldn't take but a second and then we'll start on that much larger one there and uh, I think that's the one I'll use the DA on at first just to kind of knock it down and uh, like I said give us a head start kind of break that down and then we'll switch over to the block All right, so the DA got us very close. You can see we're already starting to poke through here with the metal, so we've gone just about as far as we can go. I'll finish it up with this long block. We'll run over it a few times. Uh, once this starts to burn through here with these high points, we'll stop, wipe the whole thing again, and at that point, I'll probably just go over the whole thing with just my longboard by itself. That should finish it up, get it ready for glaze. So not bad. We got uh, you see our little high spots. That's where the old body man made his pulls back in the day, and then we're still just a little bit low here, uh, just a tiny little low spot there. So uh, I'll rewipe the whole thing. We'll bring it on down. Probably just wipe all of this, and then work it all as one piece. And uh, on the next go around, what we'll do is we'll try to prevent. The actual burn through, we'll just let it, we'll, I mean the second we just start to notice this, these high spots, we'll stop. And it'll be ready for glaze at that point. Alright, so it is the next morning. I'll show you guys how far I got with it last night before I called it quits. So this is it after a, a skim coat of glaze and work down with 80 grit on my long block. 
feathering out very, very nicely. We basically came in from the trim line down. Very, very straight now. It's blocking out really, really nice. Very smooth. Uh, I did find another low spot here. You can see where it's not feathering back. We've got a nice, good feathered edge here. Then we got a sharp edge there. So obviously this is still a little bit low in this area. I'll come in, wipe that, work it. And then at this point, all we got left is that was our little ding that we fixed. We'll have to glaze that. And I was feeling up here and it kind of has a, a little bit of a low spot here. So I'll probably glaze in this spot here, block it out. And then we're ready for primer. What I want to do, I want to prime all three of these panels. This one's already prepped and ready and even mostly masked off. So we'll come in, work this panel down, get it ready for primer, and then we're gonna we're gonna nail it. We're just gonna hose it down with about three good coats of high build 2K primer. Okay, so that's feeling really good. Feathered out really nice. I've got just a tiny little low spot here. You can see where the metal's showing on the edge, but then right here is kind of dark green. I mean, that is very, that would just about prime in. I could just about leave it alone, but I will go ahead and just, just to make sure, go ahead and add just a tiny amount to that because I still got to wipe this one and this one anyway so I might as well just go ahead and hit that little spot while I'm at it. So I do believe this door is ready for primer at this point. Quite a bit of body work went on there. So we're gonna move on to this door. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Well, didn't you already do this door in part one? Yes, and as I mentioned before, we just hit it up with some 1K primer because that's all we had at the time. Uh, we didn't wanna leave it in bare metal. It would have been too long. It'd be solid rust by now. So we're gonna scuff this down with 80 grit as well. And uh, when we prime, we're gonna prime all of this. So anyway, uh, I needed to uh, address another issue while we were at it. This has been bugging me to death. I'll show you guys right now. When you shut this door, this door gap, it's pretty big, first of all, but more importantly, it's like, it's in too far. I mean, it matches great all up through here, but then when you get down all the way down to the bottom, this door is, is pushed in. You can see where this door, the this door lines up with the rocker, and then this door is pushed in way too far. And then when you come on down this way, it ends up being more even with the rocker, like this door is back here. So. Obviously the door is kind of bent. It looks like they kind of bent this edge in too far. You could kind of feel it actually. And I think through here, this is supposed to have kind of a, a contour that comes out, but through here, the door is just kind of flat for some reason. So I want to do a little bit of panel realigning before we move on, just in case there's any body work that needs to go in. Because if you look up here as well, they've got the top of this door bent way in. And I think they were doing that because the seals in this door, check it out. The seals on the door are just completely shot. I mean, they're not doing anything anymore. And I would imagine that anybody sitting in, sitting in this seat while it's raining, the water's probably just pouring in. So their, their solution was to shove this top of the door frame in, see if they could kind of help that, I guess. But that's an easy fix. We'll bend that right back out to where it's even with this center post, just like the back door is. And like I said, we are lined up here. That is totally acceptable. 
we're just gonna have to kind of work some of this out through here and then down at the bottom. And I think that'll be good. I think that'll help narrow the gap and make it appear not to be as wide. We don't want anything over like five millimeters or then it's, it's kind of excessive. I would like to come up here and just kind of start working this edge out all the way down to the bottom. Okay, let's see what that did. That is such an improvement, just doing that. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's almost acceptable. I think if we did that maybe one more time, we'd be good. I mean, look at this down here. That is almost just right. So let's, let's make another pass and we might could call it good. Now, typically what might, what happen in this, when you're, when you're trying to raise this edge is you could end up with a little, little whoop de woo right here, a little low spot in this area. So that's why I'm trying to ease it out just a, just a little bit. And maybe we could get away without having to work this edge. We'll find out. We'll especially know when it comes time, when we block this door down and get it ready for the uh, 2K primer, any kind of, if we end up with like a dark spot through here, we'll know that this area is low and we can address it. Man, that's feeling right. That's just about acceptable. I probably will go right here just a little bit further. So basically just, just above the trim, the trim holes. Let's make a little pass through there, but look, the bottom of it is just almost there, y'all. Okay, so I lied to you and ended up taking two more passes, but look at that. Nice. We're even with the other panel. All the way down looking good and like I said a minute ago if we have a low spot here because we raised this edge and, and the rest of it didn't come with us for whatever reason that guide coats gonna tell on us and we will be able to fix the problem blend it all in and make it look nice but I mean by feel it feels great but we'll know more when we when we block this out I uh, still got to pull this out up here this is pretty simple I'll show you guys right now All right, so typically you just shove your board in here, like so. Keep your fingers out of it, obviously, and just push on it. And it's not gonna take a whole lot. Oh, oh, I felt it move big. I think I might've went too far. Hang on, let's see. Oh! <laughs> yeah, just, just a little too far there, bro, bro. All right, let's get it pushed back in. Good Lord. I have to open the door back up now. Now I'm gonna have to put the board down here. Like that. Again, keep your fingers out of it. Use a little more finesse this time. Okay, we're probably right back where we started, let's see. Uh, it needs a little more. All right, hang on. Let me straighten this out. I had to set you guys down for a minute. Sometimes my screw-ups can take four, four to six hands to straighten out. So I'm going to put my knee in there. Oh, yeah, I think that got it. Let's see. Let's find out. Almost. Yeah, I think, I think we're starting over. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Let's do one more. Perfect. Finally. Only took 16 tries, but check it out. 
perfect just like the other side now i want you guys to notice we got ourselves a nice straight line coming through here and this one matches so that's good and come back here another nice straight line very good these gaps are, are turning out really nice uh this gap is still a little a little wider than i care for and i'm not really sure why because up here it looks freaking fantastic like i pointed out that looks awesome but then after you come over the edge i mean it's just a little it just kind of gets wide through here and that could be some of their old body work i mean who knows maybe they had to do something there there's no telling but i mean it's still acceptable uh, like i said five millimeters is kind of what we go for on these older cars man i would be much more happy with it about like that though but oh well it'll be if i have to maybe i'll bump it back the only problem with bumping it back um i mean we're okay up here we could afford to go back just just a tiny bit but like i said you're going to end up closing this gap and this gap is perfect matching the other gap so i don't know we may split the difference you know we'll sacrifice the 16th there to close that up a 16th and Maybe that'll get us what we need. We'll figure that out in a minute. You can really see how that guide coat lets you know where all those low spots are and lets you know that you, you, know, you need to keep sanding or you need to stop and add something. For those of you that still don't know what guide coat is, obviously we've gone through here, we've sanded it all back down to the gray. We've got all the black guide coat off. There's your guide coat. That's what it looks like before. This is what it looks like after. And looky there, we've got ourselves a little dent and that's what the guide coat is for. It lets you know where your low spots are. Now I know to come back in and fix that. Without the guide coat, I mean, who would have known? It would have been a matter of it whether you felt it or not. So the guide code is very helpful for that. Uh, we're gonna continue working our way on down the door. Alrighty, so I went ahead and rolled her out, kind of cleaned up my work area here. Uh, this is what we ended up with. That door gap is looking really nice. This, that's acceptable, you know what I mean? Uh, it's definitely not show quality or anything like that, but acceptable nonetheless. And we're kind of building a daily driver style car here, something that you could get in and just drive around and not really have to sit around and worry about. You could take it to a car show, a cars and coffee, whatever. And if it gets a little scrape or a scuff on it or a door ding, bring it home, you touch it up and life goes on. You don't have to freak out about it like you would a show car. And we're just, we're not building a show car. We, just, we don't even have the budget for that. So anyway, uh, that is acceptable. Like I said, and moving on, uh, I'm noticing that the fender here, we, you know, it's a little bit off. Uh, if you notice here where the two meet, you could tell this fender actually could come out just a little bit to meet the door. And judging by what here, that's that's exactly what needs to happen. That fender's in just a little too far. Um, all the way through here. And then when you get to the bottom, the fender's actually out too far. So kind of opposite going on here. Uh, something that we could do uh, is get in here with our spoon. Just so happen to have one right here. Sometimes you could get in here and kind of kind of mess with it just a little bit and you want to be very very careful when you do this because you can cause a lot of little ripples and things like that especially when dealing with this thick sheet metal so just easing easing it out little at a time just working it about an inch at a time and you can already see what a dra dramatic improvement that is made already and hopefully i won't have to go back and do some body work to the fender but if we do it's not the end of the world that that still feels pretty good i don't feel any any ripples or anything and it's lining up a lot better now i could come up here and try to do the same thing but we'll go the opposite this time and do the door but i, I just don't think that's going to fix it i think we'll actually have to adjust that fender to make it right if i go 
trying to do what I did down there up here, I think I will end up just denning that door in. So, and I think that's because there's actually a mount on the other side. I'll show you guys up inside of here. That right there, that is where the fender actually mounts to the car. So there, you're, you're never gonna move that with the spoon. You're just gonna dent your panel up. So what we could do instead is we could actually come in here and loosen that and that'll probably give us a, just enough play to get where we need to be and then we could tighten it back. Let's try it. Looks like there's another one right here that we can loosen up and Oh, that'll help it move. Might give us exactly what we need right there. Uh, let's loosen it just a little more just to be on the safe side. All right, let's just go see how easy it moves, if it moves at all. Wait a minute. I haven't even touched that yet. And it's already. It's already just about there. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's moving now. That's what, that's what we needed. All right, so what I'll do is I'll kind of snug that bolt back up, and that way when I move it out, it'll stay there. All right, what do you guys think? Does that look better? It's nice and even, nothing sticking out. Got a nice even gap all the way down. But I made my mind up. I'm gonna go ahead and bump the door back at least a sixteenth of an inch and kind of close that gap up a little bit. Uh, I mean, you can see here where we're we're, we're kind of tight. This gap here, I mean, we could spare it. Let's just go back that way, sixteenth of an inch, kind of split the difference. See if we can't close that up just a hair. I think it'll look a lot better. Okay, fairly simple. We're just gonna get in there. these bolts loose and the way I want to do this is I'm just going to do one hinge at a time we will loosen these up down here all of them but one leave one tight so let's see if we can get it to move we don't need much I'm not even sure if they gave us anything. Let's see, we're gonna tighten that one up, and then now down here at the bottom, let's loosen them all. And then we'll come in, move this out. You can see we got some movement there. And then we'll lock one of these in place and see where that put us. By the way, anytime you're moving your doors around, it helps to go ahead and get the latches out of the way. And then you want to put your latches back in after the door is where it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just kind of putting the screws back in. I don't trust these. They got a plate on the inside that moves around so that you can adjust it. And sometimes when you pull these screws out, those things will fall down inside there and you got to go dig them out. So anyway, just kind of, I'm not saying that'll happen because it may not, but it, it kind of feels like it will. <laughs> it does. It feels like it's going to fall down in there. So it's just a safe bet. Go ahead and throw the screws back on just in case. All right. So I got the top hinge done. Let's see where that got us. All right. See how our gap closed up at the top. All right, so it's working. Now we just need to do the bottom hinge, and that should make it perfect. Okay, hopefully that'll get it. Much better. Look at that. I think that that's acceptable, and I think we've, we've basically split the difference at this point. So now that we got the door where we want it, we could put this latch in and line it up with the door like I mentioned earlier. 
Nice. I like it. Okay. I can live with that. I can live with this. There's nothing left to do, but let's, let's start putting some top coats on. Uh, we'll start with some self-etched primer, cover up the bare metal, and then we'll move on to our uh, high build primer. We'll probably put three coats of that on. Okay, here we go. I got it all masked off. Everything's wiped down, clean, ready to go. Let's start hitting it with some primer. Uh, we're going to start off with an etch primer since we do have bare metal. This is what I'm using. Got this from O'Reilly's. That is a 2K etch primer, 40 or 491-17, and it takes, here's the uh, activator for it, and it's just a one-to-one -one mix, so super easy to mix up. Let's get some in the cup. Now, it's not going to take very much of this, so that is probably about all we're going to do right there. There's our one to one ratio. We went up to the number two, so all we got to do is go up to the next number two in the next column. It's just that easy. There you have it. So we're tacked off, ready to go. This stuff here, all you want to do is just put a really light coat. Just one coat, that's it. We're not really looking for coverage. We just want to kind of mist that on there. I'm going to turn my pressure up just a little bit. There we go. Now with etch primer, you don't need it on uh, any of your prime surfaces or any of that, just bare metal only. They say anything over one square inch. Let's get, get a little bit there. A little bit there. All right, let's see. Of course, we need most of this back door, so. Okay, so that's pretty much what you want it to look like when you're done. Just kind of a light, a light coat that you can basically still see through, really. And you want to keep the majority of it off of your body filler. Just keep it on the bare metal only. You should be all right. So this is our 2K primer. Four parts primer, one part activator. Very simple to mix. Get that in there. My etch primer's been on here for about, I'd say, 25 to 30 minutes. It's about 70-ish degrees, 75 outside right now, so that should be long enough. We can start hitting it with our 2K primer.
Okay, now here's coat number two. So there we are after two full coats. Those are medium wet coats and I don't see any of the bodywork poking through anymore. So we're completely uh, sealed up at this point. And like I said, we're gonna do three coats in all. So we'll put one more medium wet coat on there and that should be plenty of material on there to be able to come back and block sand it all very nice and smooth. So this will be the third and final coat right here. So there you have it you guys what do y'all think man i think it laid down really nice and smooth i don't see any of the sand and scratches or anything man remember how remember how crusty it was when you'd rub your hand in there and it was just like ah uh, i mean it was just so bad it's so smooth now the panels are lining up half-ass decent cool deal looks really good being in primer so we'll hit it with our guide coat like we always do you guys know the deal you've seen it a million times you just take your, your flat black spray paint and you just kind of start dusting it on there that way you can come back and do your block sanding later but that'll be another video as you guys can see it got laid on me again like it always does so i gotta cut the video here the video is getting kind of long I sure do appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me while I do this. It's been a fun project. Very time consuming, but fun. And fun nonetheless. So anyway, please like, share, subscribe, you guys. I really appreciate all of you watching. Don't forget my Instagram. Be a link in the description. Uh, hit up my Facebook, Weird Beard on Facebook. Send me a friend request. Be sure to tune in next time, because uh, you never know where we're going to end up. We're still waiting on some materials to do some of our rust repairs. So for now, we're just kind of stripping the quarters, but we're, we're waiting to do our repairs before we go back and start putting our top coats like primers and, and things like that. Uh, we'll probably get over here on the other side, just start tearing it down, get it ready to go. More of the same, lots of panels on this thing, but you know what? There's three more right there that are nice and straight, ready to be blocked out. This thing's looking good. I'm gonna get out of here, you guys. It's getting kind of late. I'll see you guys next time.